Good morning, and welcome to Lord of Love Foods and Church on this, the day of Pentecost, or the Sunday of Pentecost. Um, just two announcements. Yesterday, there were two very successful events. The uh, Men's Relay for Life recouped over $700 for um, Camp Agape by their paper shredding event. And Relay for Life, I counted at some point during the fellowship time um, with the barbecue and the um, uh, auction that I counted close to 30 people in our fellowship hall. So that was really, um, really good. And then our, um, our musical director, Brad, has uh, wonderful lavender plants out there for anybody to take. They're on the, um, next to the bench to the left. Please take some home if you'd like. Um, and they're his gift to us. Thanks, Brad. <coughs> We'll begin with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the res resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is 395, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord.
love of God, called to be saints, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray together. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First lesson is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared on them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, <coughs> Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, Ah, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. The Psalm 104, we will read it responsively, verse by verse. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is a sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number living things, both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. 
You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they did not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak on whatever he, speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that, you are, that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, Amen. So today is Pentecost, sometimes called the birthday of the church. It's a day when we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit promised by Jesus, sent to the disciples by God as a gentle, but restless, but placid comforter and advocate. The Holy Spirit gave the disciples the confidence to come out of their hiding and to start doing the work of Jesus in the world. So that's the, the, the gospel today in a nutshell, if you will. They were able to come out of their hiding, have confidence to do the work of Jesus in the world. The Holy Spirit did this first with gentleness. And of course, the, the song that I always want to have sung on Pentecost is Spirit of Gentleness, which we'll sing in just a few minutes. So it comes first with gentleness. Divided tongues rested on each disciple. Rested means gentle, or indicates calm, soothing, but also uplifting. 
The Holy Spirit came with gentleness, with tongues resting on the disciples. And we can think of a great comforter on our beds. There's one commercial that's going around that if you buy this blanket, you're going to sleep greatly. And I've been tempted, I must say, but I haven't gotten it yet. And if we have a great comforter that's really snuggly and fluffy, we snuggle up to it. We enjoy it. Not now, of course, it's too hot, but when, when it's colder evenings. And the gentle wind of the Holy Spirit then can also be a relief in whatever weather we might encounter. If we think of the Spirit as breath, which came upon the disciples, it has to be seen as life-giving breath, God's holy breath. God gives us his breath. Right from the beginning, we see from Scripture that God breathed into Adam the breath of life. That's an intimate image. It's the first CPR ever given in recorded history. God breathes into Adam the breath of life. Holy breath. And to me, that's amazing, humbling, and overwhelming. And we don't ever want to stifle the Spirit so that someone else can't breathe. As part of the breath that the Spirit gives to us, we need to blow our life-giving breath on others. And of course, use um, mouthwash before you do. Gentle, placid, God's breath is in us. It is what created us. It's what resurrects us. It's what gives us life in this world and enables us to do the work of Christ, to be Christ's hands and feet as people did yesterday by the, the paper shredding and the Real Life for Life event. God's breath in us means we must speak out against those who have snuffed out the breath of others, whether it be individuals like George Floyd a year ago, or Ahmaud Arbery, or Breonna Taylor, or not just individuals, but groups of people like the Palestinians. If the list of peoples mentioned in Acts were to be updated today, it would include Palestinians, people of Yemen, Sudan, Syria, India, and of course indigenous peoples throughout the world. And we can add our own as well. So the writer of Acts, known to be Luke, named the city so that it was clear that all nations, all people of the world, were included upon this Holy Spirit giving breath to them and to the world. The spirit that comes to the disciples is a border-crossing spirit, a border-transgressing spirit. And this gentle spirit is prompting the disciples to go to those to whom they would, in fact, strongly prefer never to share space together with. So when the spirit of gentleness takes hold of them, it changes the newly formed church's worldview. As Peter quotes Joel, he's showing Joel's vision of where the spirit will go. Peter says, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And Joel describes what all flesh means. Sons and daughters, young and old, even slaves who have no rights, no status, no position, no power. All of these have dreams. And after Peter gives that sermon on Pentecost, thousands respond by committing themselves to life together in fellowship and in learning and prayer following Jesus through his disciples. And each one of those people that were a part of that marvelous crowd <clears throat> were full of life because of the body of Christ and the breath and, and life given to us by the Holy Spirit. And all of that then, they viewed as a means to change the world. And we all know that such change in the world is never ending. So yesterday, <clears throat> Last night, I had the good fortune to turn on C-SPAN, which I don't often, where I heard three people. One was Violet Fletcher, 107 years old. Her little brother, only 100, Hugh Van Ellis. Leslie Randall, 106. They were all survivors of the Tulsa massacre of 100 years ago, which will be observed in a week's time and they testified before Congress. The back cover of the book that I got, The Burning, subtitled Massacre, Destruction, and the Tulsa Race Riot of, of 1921, says that on the morning of June 1st, 
In 1921, a white mob numbering in the thousands marched across the railroad tracks, dividing black from white in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and obliterated a community then celebrated as one of America's most prosperous. The community was called Greenwood. 34 square acres of Tulsa's Greenwood community, known as the Black Wall Street of America, was reduced to rubble. <clears throat> During that time, it said at least 35 and up to 300 black breaths were taken from them. And seemingly there's been no reparations made to the families of those who were victimized in what has been called the Tulsa riots. And up until recently, history hasn't even mentioned it much. So this is where we as spirit-filled Christ Christians need to be restless in speaking out against taking away someone's breath just because of the color of their skin or any other, other reason. We need to speak out even against the government taking away someone's breath. Because if you notice in the news recently, South, South Carolina has added a new means of executing death row inmates by firing squad. We need to speak out even when our government is willing to take people's lives and take their breaths. When one of God's people can't breathe, no matter who it is, especially in our inequitable justice system, then we can't breathe as well. Then we are suffocated. Our God-given breath of life is snuffed out. When one life, or 400,000 plus lives in our nation, or two million lives worldwide are taken by a pandemic, then it takes our breath out of our lives, a little of our breath out of our lives as well. The disciples in the book of Acts were gathered together to celebrate Shabbat, the Feast of Weeks. It was a harvest festival. It's also a remembrance of receiving the Torah, the law, the law on Mount Sinai. So this time together began as a gentle, a placid time. They perhaps were going to use this time to study together the Torah, a gentle, placid coming of the Spirit but we must not forget the restless spirit that also came to them. So even though the disciples probably wanted a simply a placid spirit that might have ruffled their feathers slightly like a gentle breeze, the soft breath of God maybe they wanted, but we, if we are honest and if the disciples were honest, sometimes we need a wind so strong it lifts us out of our complacency. Sometimes we need a spirit of restlessness as the hymn we will soon sing states. And that spirit of restlessness then causes our hearts to be blazing with the fire of commitment to seeking God's judgment, to work to ensure that the breath of God is not snuffed out in violence and hatred. We know we need to be ablaze with the notion that the breath of all people, Sudanese, Yemenis, Palestinian, Israeli, Syrian, Indians, and indigenous peoples the world over need to be honored and need to be loved. Just as Jesus loves knew no bounds, neither should ours. So the spirit of gentleness calls us. As the hymn says, it calls us from the wilderness, as does the windy spirit of restlessness. What spirit will we have? Placidness? Gentleness? Restlessness? How about both? Gentleness and restlessness. The spirit of gentleness to study Jesus in the way of life that he, he forged for his followers. But also the spirit of restlessness by which we put our study of spirit, scripture into action. Then just maybe, as the prophet Joel says through the writer of Acts, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And everyone can be, um, can be assured that they will always have the breath of life, both here and eternally. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> so the hymn of the day is Spirit of Gentleness.
Let us now speak together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken from the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in your visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with the breath of your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of their people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore wholeness to all who are in need this day. Especially we remember those who are on our whiteboard, Blanca, Paul, Dennis, Bud, John, Barbara, Sandy, Ingrid, Jane, Nick, David, Rebecca, Bob, Shirley, Peggy, Jim, Carol, Eric, Stephanie, Julie, Denise, David, Kevin, Tom, and any other
others whom we name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Amen. Mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation, Lord of Life Lutheran Church, with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of your neighbors, of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you, raise your eternal, their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, O Lord, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. <clears throat> Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. May his peace be with you always. You may share the greeting of peace with one another. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. The closing hymn is number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. Neglected to mention earlier, there is extra barbecue and coleslaw that you may take, go in the fellowship hall, and you may take some and make a donation if you wish. <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be God.